Hello, in today's video I'll be showing you how to take some photographs around your garden. So here in the UK um, we haven't had the best of years. Um, we've had about four different um, storms and at the moment we've got um, coronavirus. Now each country is going to have their different rules but um, here in the UK um, we were asked not to go out um, and to observe social um, distancing. So we couldn't go out too far um, and we had to be at least two meters away from another person. However, there are a few people who flouted that rule and just traveled all across the country to get to the beaches. So we've now been told off and we're all grounded. And a lot of people are stuck at home and quite rightly, it's, it's nice and safe. So I really don't have a problem with it but I can't get out to do any landscape photography. So what I thought I'd do is just get out in the garden and try and take some photographs. And I thought today's video, I'll go and show you um, the sort of things I can do and also the sort of things that you can do. To take photographs um, in your garden, first of all, ideally you need a garden. Um, if you don't have a garden, um, that's not the end of the world. You can still use some of these techniques I'm gonna show you. Um, if you live in a flat or something like that, these are still the same kind of things um, that you can do, but um, there's just a lot more opportunity if you can, if you have a garden. So first of all, I'd like to talk about the essentials. Only really one essential, and that's to have a camera. Um, so what I'm using, this is my landscape photography camera. Uh, this is a DSLR with a 70 to 300 mil lens. Because I do a lot of landscape photography, this is ideal for me. But if you have a phone with a camera on it, then that is just as good. Um, so what I'm doing in in particularly today is to try and take some close ups of some of the interest in the garden. So it's very early on. Um, it's about April now. So when we don't have a lot of flowers and things like that out, um, I hope you can hear me with that Robin. Um, it does sound beautiful. And that's one of the great things about being in your garden. If you can hear things like that, it's, I know a lot of people are complaining about being stuck inside, but you're safe, um, you're isolating. The, the things you can do, it's not so bad. Um, it's just about being positive and making the best of what you can. So as I was saying, um, I'm gonna be taking some photographs of wildlife and flowers in the garden. The, the garden really does come into its own um, around May, June time, which is about two to three months away. Um, so there isn't really a lot out. There's a few spring flowers out now, um, which I've got some early ones just so you can support the wildlife throughout the whole year. Um, but there's a lot more that come out in the summer. But because everyone's stuck down at the moment, um, and I'm hearing a lot of people getting really frustrated, um, being bored, so I thought I'd get the video out now just to give you some ideas um, of what you can do if you're locked down. So to take photographs of the flowers and things like that, what I really like to do is get as close up as I can. So using a long lens like a 300mm, um, that can enable me to get quite close to these flowers, but not close enough to get real detail of the flowers themselves, or especially if there's any insects or anything on the flower themselves. So what I've got and I'm using with this um, camera is some extension tubes. Now these are really cheap. You can pick these up off eBay or Amazon. So if you don't have anything like that and you have a DSLR or any um, camera that you can detach the lenses, you can put these in between the lens and the camera um, and what that will do is now enable you to really reduce the, the focal distance of the lens because this at 300 mil, I think this is about two meters or something like that. Whereas um, when you start adding these, this breaks down, you've got three different types here and those go in between the lens and the camera. And what that will enable you to do is really shorten that um, focusing distance to anything from, I don't know, what's that? Six inches, um, so you can get really close to these flowers. 
So if you can get um, these delivered and you don't have any, these are really useful and they're a cheap solution to get close-up photographs of um, the detail in the flowers or bees and insects as well. So I think these are really useful, um, especially as I don't own a, a macro lens. So what if you don't have a camera and a long lens or any extension tubes? Well, you can still take photographs on a phone. Most smartphones now have cameras built into them and they are getting really good. So all you need to do for that is just put the camera on and just go as close as you can focus into the subject, tap on the screen to focus right on where you're photographing and press the button. And it's as simple as that. Um, the old camera that I used to have had a burst mode on it. And what that allows you to do is, is if you just hold your finger on the button, it will take 30 photographs in one go. So when you're taking photographs close up of a subject, it is really difficult to, to get it all in focus um, because your depth of field can be anything from even less than, it can probably be less than a millimeter. What I generally do with the burst mode is just to get the camera as close as I can and make sure it's in focus. I'll then move towards the subject, press the burst mode, and then slowly move back over the 30 shots. And out of those 30 shots, I'm pretty much guaranteed to get one that's perfectly in focus. So a lot of the um, cameras on these phones focus quite um, close to the subject. But if they don't, what you can do is you can get these clip-on um, lenses. And what this is, um, this is essentially just a, a macro lens that clips on to the, the camera like that. And that will enable me to get a lot closer to the subject using this camera. So a friend of mine, Liesl, uses um, a moment macro lens. And some of the photographs that she gets with her phone are stunning. There's, there's basically, I couldn't get anything as good as those. So what I'll do is put a link to her videos at the end of this video um, so you can see how she does it and she takes some absolutely amazing macro phot photographs with just a phone. Right, so I'm going to take some photographs now of this clematis and we've got some really beautiful little flowers on this. Um, so this is one of the most prolific clematises that I've got. So there's some really stunning flowers. They're a nice purpley colour with like a, a lime green centre. Um, and what I'm going to do is try and take a photograph with the phone. Um, I'm not going to use the macro lens just yet, but all I'm going to do is just go up as close as I can in focus, focus on the flower, and then so see, that is the, the photograph there. Um, if you can get really close on those, you can get some lovely detail. Or you could wait till something a bit more interesting comes along, um, such as a bee or a hoverfly, maybe a spider or something like that. It, even though these flowers are really beautiful on, on their own, if you think about waiting for a few minutes just for a bee to come along, then that will add even more interest to your photograph. Um, none of the roses on this bush have come out yet, but um, there is a bee just on here, um, resting on these, these um, leaves. Now, if you look at these leaves, they're very, a lovely yellow colour because they've just, just come out. Um, so they've got a really nice vibrant colour to them. Um, so what I'm going to do now is take a photograph of this little bee just resting here on the, on the leaf. Um, now we've got a little bit of a breeze coming along, um, so it's, the leaves are moving quite a bit, but um, especially that's going to be magnified um, using a macro lens. So um, you will have to wait until the, the wind has stopped before you can actually get the photograph of him. But uh, you won't be able to see him on that camera, but I'll uh, video him close up with the uh, macro lens. Okay. We're seeing quite a lot of wind on this one. Um, the bee and the leaf are moving quite a bit. And as you can see, it's coming in and out of focus and 
going up and down around the screen so trying to get the composition is quite difficult as well so on this one what i did is just really zoom in close as i can um, focus when it's still and then i can photograph the bee so i've managed to get a couple of photographs of this bee now um, as you can see from the the photograph it's it was very close to the lens um, i got managed to get a couple of different compositions um, one from the side um, just to show the fluffiness of the bee and then one looking head on to the bee um, and you can actually see its jaws and everything and um, the compound eye so um, i think this is quite an exciting photograph right this here is a lily what i'm going to do is take a photograph you can see down the end ends of these you've got these um, lovely little petals coming out as the stems grow so inside you've got lots of patterns of all the um, inside of these leaves here and that can make a lovely star shape so as i was saying earlier you don't necessarily need a garden you can pick up um, cut flowers from a supermarket or something like that and they often have lilies um, and any sort of plant really you can photograph um, you can photograph the little um, patterns on the leaves here or when these come out into flower you can get some really nice um, trumpet shapes that you can get some really close-up photographs um, of the inside of the flower so don't worry if you don't have a garden there there are plenty of other things that you can photograph so i've taken the photograph now of these uh, these leaves here um, but also there is a scarlet lily beetle on um, one of these leaves here they do tend to um, eat the lilies and a lot of people don't like them but um, i don't really have a major problem with them um, because I just I think they make a wonderful photographic um, subject so what I'm going to do now is take another photograph as close up as I can of these little beetles okay I've I've taken that photograph now I've, um, I've got the one on the side there's a there's a couple of holes where they've chomped through um, and you can see the holes and the damage that these these lily beetles are making in this lily so that's quite a, a nice shot to show <laughs> what sort of things they do um, but also there was one on this little leaf here i don't know if you can see him he's just on the underside there so um put him back now, he was on the top a, a little while ago um, and i managed to get a photograph of him from the side and also from the front there's a little bit of water on the beetle so you've got this little blob on, on the back of it which um, looked quite interesting um, and I also managed to get a photograph looking up um, of his mouth and his full-on face from the front on um, and he's got some really big jaws so um, they look quite uh, intimidating close up but they're they're only tiny so um, if you're a lily then a bit more scary if you are photographing um, insects these ones are quite tolerant to me getting really close and taking photographs they don't move that much um, but it's it really is picking the the type of insect that doesn't move much um, if you have things like hoverflies and bees and butterflies they can be quite skittish um, and they're very active and it's quite difficult to photograph things like that but if you can get say a bee or a beetle just resting on the leaf um, and it should stay there for long enough to take the photograph um, one tip is that if you're taking photographs of insects, um, when it's earlier on in the morning, um, it's quite cold and they're less active. Um, and when the heat of the day starts warming up, then they'll start moving around. So um, if you want to keep them as still as possible, try and get a, an early morning photograph. And also, if you get rain or dew or mist or anything on the leaves, um, that would add to make it a little bit more um, interest to the photograph as well. I'm now going to take a photograph of these flowers. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the name is, but what I love about these is you've got this really um, delicate flower here. And in the centre there, you've got, it's like a little nodule, um, and you've got all the little stamens and things popping out. Now, what I love about this is there's such beautiful detail right in the centre. Um, and if you take a macro shot of just the center of this flower here um, and just you know, move that one out of the way um, 
just the the whole flower itself um, the center of that flower actually looks a bit, little bit like um, coronavirus so um, with its little little ball with spikes coming out of it so uh, it's like a mirror in nature essentially right I don't think you can see on here but this clematis here has got this little honeybee popping out of it he will uh, come out and fly off in a minute if you do have a garden um, I really do urge you to plant some flowers for pollinators they they really do appreciate it in the summer this garden is just full of bees and butterflies and hoverflies all just buzzing around and it's really beautiful just to to sit there and relax just hearing them doing going about their, their daily routine so he's just down in this little one this flower here so what i'm going to do is see if i can get some photographs of this clematis there is a tiny little uh, I think it's a mosquito or a gnat or something in here. You can see his little furry antlers. So I'm going to take a little photograph of that. Um, these bees are moving around a little bit quick, so I don't think I'm going to be able to photograph those, but um, I'm going to see what I can get. So I really do hope that you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, I hope there's some, some good tips for you there. So you don't have to go out to take some good photographs. If you've got a garden or a, a windowsill or anything like that, you can put a flower there and just photograph it um, up close. It's just about thinking about things slightly differently. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you're staying safe and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.